our new YCS New Jersey Championship. So we played Trickster or Sky Striker. It was the best deck for a tournament of this caliber. Before diving into the history, let's discover their pros and cons. The reason why they were successful in the first place is because they are a consistent one card engine with some very unique qualities. Whereas at their release, we had something like Zodiac, which just did more as a one card engine. After Zodiac was gone, there wasn't really anything else in the game that could do as much as these stars did. While being technically a burn deck, they're more so a control burn deck, but in a modern sense. Light Stage could easily act as back row removal every single turn while searching all your trick stars, Candina was a stratos for the archetype, Licorice made the entire archetype very difficult to deal with because if you ever target Candina, you can just chain Licorice and guarantee your follow up, and a card like Lilybell made going for game that much easier. But what's important to note is while all of these cards created a very unique form of card advantage to be gained every single turn that eventually snowballs into your victory, the card that really set this archetype apart and made it so that they can have defensive capabilities, although in a very unique way, is Trickstar Reincarnation. Reincarnation was a very unique kind of disruption because it didn't technically deal with your opponent's monsters, but rather it affected their hand. Trickstar Reincarnation can banish your opponent's entire hand and then they draw the same number of cards. This in turn fuels your Licorice to burn for damage, while at the same time, you typically do this when they search something. And because Reincarnation can banish their entire hand, it means that whatever card they searched is now null and void, unless they draw into another one. This specific card becomes even more integral when we think about its interactions with Droll and Lockbird. This two card combo is infamous in the trading card game, because the ability to go Chainlink 1 Reincarnation, Chainlink 2 Droll after they search, means your opponent loses their entire hand. If you don't know how this is ruled, let me explain real quick. So after your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, except during the draw phase, you can activate Trickstar Reincarnation to banish their entire hand and then draw the same number of cards. However, because this is the resolution of when they search a card, you can activate Droll and Lockbird as Chain Link 2. Now what's going to happen is Droll's gonna resolve so they can't add anything else, and you may think, oh, Reincarnation just fizzles, right? Well, no. Because it already activated its effect, it's going to attempt to resolve as much as possible. So your opponent is forced to banish their entire hand, but it can no longer achieve the second condition, which is they draw the same number of cards, meaning they essentially lose their entire hand. Reincarnation had a secondary effect, however, while in the graveyard, you can banish it from the grave to reborn a trick star. And this just made the deck even more sticky and hard to deal with. So generally, you play a 13 to 16 card engine, and the premise is the rest of your hand is going to be generic disruption, like Ash, Veiler, Droll, whatever the case may be. And that's what made this one card engine so potent in every metagame it was meta. And there is one other important factor to note, which I will mention, is that they can inflict damage really quickly. If you let give them a turn, they will inflict so much damage, it's hard for them not to OTK you. Instead of a traditional deck like Altergeist being able to snowball in card advantage, Trickstars, while technically they do snowball in advantage, snowball in burn damage, which makes them very unique, like every other trait this deck contains from every other archetype. Light Sage being able to add act as back row removal by targeting and sending during the end phase, as well I should mention, is another very potent effect, making this archetype more preferable in terms of control decks over others. In combination with their Snowball of Burn, they could OTK quite easily, especially with a card like Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon had a specific OTK in unison with the other trick stars, where you'd constantly loop its special summon effect to keep special summoning Lily Bell and attacking for 800, getting Licorice back, Licorice will then crash into a body, and you keep summoning Lily Bell back and burning and burning until your opponent's life points reach zero. Finally, one of their powerhouses that generated a massive amount of advantage super quickly was Scapegoat. Scapegoat was able to special summon four tokens at once during your opponent's end phase, and specifically in Trickstar, this was really good. One, you didn't have to special summon during your opponent's turn, like a deck like Altergeist where they have to summon Multi Faker. Secondarily, Scapegoat 
about just summon four tokens, which means you can either use them as protection or because of the advent of link summoning, it made scapegoats so stupidly good because you get four free bodies to link summon with. So this deck had a lot of different traits that made it very favorable over any other control deck. And through its history, because this deck could adapt to every metagame because they could play so many generic cards, it was able to adapt to different combo metagames while potentially not being as good in some and better in others, Trickstar was definitely a force to be reckoned with. There are some flaws with this deck, the most hilarious being that it can't get over a Gem Knight Garnet, aka any monster with 1800 or more attack had troubles with Trickstar. I would know, I played Trickstar at a locals and uh, played against Gem Knights. <clears throat> because Trickstar had just a ton of 1800 attack monsters and Candino was the strongest monster in the archetype, along with the deck just not having much in-theme removal because Reincarnation is your main form of disruption and it doesn't actually remove threats, it just made big bodies really hard to deal with. Another issue is just not drawing Lightsage or Candina, but that's really hard to say will happen because your deck is just so consistent with 9 copies of Candina at its peak, 3 terraforming, 3 Lightsage, Stage and 3 Candina, but it does happen. And of course, it's important to note that in its future, outside of just the pure theme, we have Sky Striker Trickstar becoming prevalent. For both Sky Striker and Trickstars inherently having great synergy as a control strategy, being able to gain so much card advantage so quickly in unison with one another, the Sky Striker engine also solving Trickstars problems of stuff like not having removal and being able to be more aggressive turn one, whereas Trickstars were already gaining card advantage in a quick fashion. Eventually, we'd get the release of Trickstar Korobane, an inherent special summon for the Trickstar strategy, but because it didn't lock you into anything, and you just basically get two free monsters with one Candina, along with Light Stage being a basic back row removal type card, this meant that you could utilize this quote unquote engine in any deck that just required its qualities. In the future, we'd get Orcus that required any two monsters with different names, and guess what? Trickstar, Candina, and Korobane have different names. So Trickstar, because of Light Stage, would be utilized in Orcus. But enough of what made the deck good, let's finally get into the history of this fairy type Reigns archetype. With the release of Code of the Duelist, Zodiac and True Draco would remain at the top, and why would we even consider Trickstar when Zodiac was just better in every way? Until the September 2017 ban list. This ban list hit both Zodiac and True Draco, leaving the metagame wide open. However, True Draco was still a threat, and without Zodiac and the decrease in power of Draco, this made way for Pendulum to become a top tier threat. We did have Trickstar in the metagame, however, their strategy was not yet solved and would take some time to figure out, but we didn't have enough time to figure it out before the tier zero Armageddon of Spiral. Spiral re havoc with the release of Spiral Double Helix, destroying the rest of the metagame to the point where they took 29 out of the top 32 spots at YCS events. While this especially power creep Pendulum and True Draco for the time being, Trickstar somehow kept up. Now that we had time to figure out the strategy, they did have the capabilities to do at least something to this immovable threat and get at least two out of the top 32 slots. Granted, this wasn't much, but Trickstar was starting to show signs that maybe they could keep up with other top tier threats. Spiral was emergency hit in the November 6, 2017 ban list, limiting both Quick Fix and Drone and removing the access to machine duplication. And this was quite an effective hit on Spiral, reducing their consistency in a great way by removing two copies of Quick Fix and Drone and removing the ability to play machine dupe. And while this doesn't seem like the biggest hit and Spiral was still the best deck, this was an incredible buff to Trickstar, especially because Quick Fix and Drone were quite integral to the strategy. Sure, they still had 3 Resort and 3 Terraforming, but what made this so good for Trickstar is it made Reincarnation that much more potent, with its very unique kind of disruption, meaning you can banish their Quick Fix and Drone upon the search of them and remove that threat altogether. Trickstar had a pretty decent spiral matchup in the end, especially because you could play so many hand traps. What it did not have in that 
format, however, was the greatest Pendulum matchup. Pendulum was able to return to the metagame because of Spiral's hits. It's not that Pendulum was bad when Spiral was tier zero, but rather it just wasn't as effective comparatively to what Spiral could do out of less cards. But now with the consistency hits, Pendulum had a reason to be played, being that it was more consistent. And so Pendulum came back as another top tier threat. So the hierarchy at this point was Spiral, then Pendulum, and then Trickstar. Next, we move on to after Spiral Resort was limited, and this made Spiral way too inconsistent to be played at this point. And while Pendulum received massive hits with Skullcrabat going to zero, Double Iris being banned as well, this wasn't enough because of the impending release of Electromite, putting Pendulum on surprisingly an even greater level despite these banless hits as the top tier deck of that format. True Draco could also return be because Spiral's biggest boon against True Draco was that Sleeper was untargetable into mediums, making it really hard to deal with. And then if you try to do anything, Spiral Sleeper will just pop two cards. True Draco had a terrible Spiral matchup, but because it's now gone, True Draco could return as well. This leaves Trickstar in an even worse position, however, as it doesn't have that great of a Pendulum or True Draco matchup. And this format would continue with mainly just Pendulum and True Draco at the top. Trickstar would top here and there, but was definitely not as prevalent as it would have liked. It needed some backup, and we received that backup. Introducing the Sky Strikers, intended to be a pure strategy, would instead be mixed with so many different archetypes through its lifespan because of the power of Engage, and that power was first utilized in Trickstar. Sky Striker and Trickstar supported each other incredibly well, with Striker being able to solve the problems Trickstar had, and these two combined, along with the power of Scapegoat, being able to summon four tokens during your opponent's end phase and using them on your turn for insane link potential. Along with the release of the Nightmares making Scapegoat even better, meant Sky Striker Trickstar was looking promising for the future, and especially because in May, Pendulum and True Draco received big enough hits to make them less relevant, Sky Striker Trickstar could now finally take the stage as the best deck. The only problem was, there was another powerful strategy. Goki, the deck that was introduced alongside Trickstar, received big enough buffs in the form of the Nightmares to become another tier 1 threat, and arguably even more powerful than predecessing combo decks, being able to set up an extra link with the greatest of ease off of 1-2 to two cards. This level of power potentially even exceeded Spiral, and because of this, Goki would become a tier 1 threat. And if it wasn't for the introduction of Sky Strikers to the Trickstar strategy, Strategy, we potentially would have had a tier 0 Goki format. But thank goodness, Sky Striker Trickstar was here to combat it. And while it was an inferior strategy, Sky Striker Trickstar did pick up some YCS wins. Moving forward, the Goki format would continue, with Sky Striker Trickstar trying to keep up, and then we got the release of Sky Striker Ace Hayate that underratedly changed the format entirely because the problem with pure Sky Striker prior was it was just too slow turn one. Hayate going second was able to give you the ability to dump any Sky Striker card from your deck to the grave being a spell or a ray. And this in turn meant you can send engage to recur it with Kagari or this put the third spell in your graveyard to utilize any of your Sky Striker cards at their fullest potential and this put pure Sky Striker on the map as an actual threat. And slowly but surely, it would power creep Trickstar because it just did more with one card. Now from this point on, Sky Striker would eventually just take over in general and become the most represented control deck. It wasn't that Trickstar couldn't compete, but it just wasn't as good. And Trickstar would become a very potent tier 2 deck, but would basically be power creeped in general. Over time, the Sky Striker engine got hit as well, meaning Trickstar would basically become a pure strategy. That is, until it became an engine. Introducing Savage Strike. Savage Strike introduced Trickstar Korobane, a piece of support that 1. enabled you to beat over those pesky Gem Knight Garnets, acting as both a 2000 attack body and an honest from hand. But secondarily, this card was a free special summon. If you needed two monsters that were let's say fairy or different names, which will be relevant in the future, then you can utilize this as an engine just because Light Stage is such a powerful field spell. Well, that engine would arrive in the form of the Orcist engine, because in Savage Strike, along with Korobane, we received 
received Orcus Nightmare. This card enabled Nightmare Mermaid to summon Orcus Nightmare from deck, getting you access to your entire Orcus engine. As while Orcus variants did not utilize Trickstar at this point, moving forward past Dark Neo Storm with two very important Orcus cards being released, being Dingirsu and Crescendo, this made Orcus an incredible tier one strategy. And what was the best engine in the deck to be utilized? That was the Trickstars, because once again, Light Stage showed how powerful of a field spell it really is, both acting as your consistency piece in the form of your one card combo, but additionally being a quote-unquote MST to deal with your opponent's back row. This led to it becoming the best engine in any Orcus variant, and was so good in fact that in the August 2019 ban list, Trickstar finally got hit. It was never hit before, and it will never be hit since because Light Stage going to 1 not only hurt the consistency to the point where pure Trickstar realistically became unplayable, but especially with Terraforming going to 1 on that ban list as well, 5 copies of Candina is not enough for the sake of consistency. And while Trickstar is a decent engine in any field spell deck, Trickstar would fade from the spotlight and become a part of history. They did have one moment that truly shined, however, and that is at the 2018 Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship. At this event, Trickstar, amongst all odds in a field of mostly Goki, was able to defeat all the Goki players because of the way they built their deck, and in the finals faced Altergeist, and eventually claimed the title as the world champion. Trickstar had quite a long road to success, and eventually fading from relevance. But one thing is for certain is, Trickstar is a beloved archetype by so many different people, because they gotta utilize the deck for such a long endeavor, from 2017 all the way to 2019, all things must come to an end, and Trickstar's journey would end here, setting the stage for other performers to rise to the top. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and see more history content like this one. Make sure to join my Discord server in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and with that, I hope to see you soon.